Greetings and welcome again to this Midday Power Surge, September 4th, 2019. Friends, we made it. We made it. We made it. Yolanda, Franklin, and the rest of you, again, Ryan Hall, Jocianne, Brenda, Yvonne, Michelle, Richard, Rachel. All right, friends, welcome one, welcome all to this midday power surge. Friends, the topic that we're going to cover this midday hour is one of those topics that actually puts the nail in a sure place for why God has inspired me to do this midday power surge sessions is to bring about revival and reformation in these last days by looking at current events for urgency and for all of us to examine ourselves based on scripture you know friends many times we cover a plethora of various topics but today's topic is of the utmost importance Friends, we can understand, have a knowledge of Bible prophecies. We can even be vigilant as it relates to current events. And yet, we may have a microwave Christian experience. What is that? A microwave Christianity. What is a microwave Christianity? Let's talk for a minute. Most of us are aware of a microwave oven, right? Or a microwave oven, correct? What is the general customary use for a microwave oven? Okay, Rachel, superficial. Anyone else? All right. Mastiff, microwave fast. It's actually, okay, it's actually Mozart, Crystal. It's actually putting food in that microwave oven, turning it on, and actually reheating, heating, cooking, food rather quickly but what happens to the nutrients in the food as a result what happens and the sad reality is many of us are having a microwave christianity now some of you are right now on your job it's midday power surge i want to give you a quick nugget so if you have to leave you may do so and for the rest of us we can remain until we are through for this midday power surge i'm going to quote now from education page 260 one of my favorite scriptures it says an intensity such as never before was seen is taking possession of the world in amusement in money making in the contest for power in the very struggle for existence there is a terrible force that engrosses body and mind and soul in the midst of this maddening maddening in the midst of this maddening rush God is speaking. He bids us come apart and commune with him. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46 verse 10. Are you having a microwave? Christianity goes on to say, many, even in the seasons of devotion, fail of receiving the blessing of real communion with God. They are in too great haste. They are what, my friends? They are in too great haste. Microwave Christianity. With horrid steps, they press through the circle of Christ's loving presence, pausing perhaps a moment within the sacred precincts, but not waiting for counsel. They have no time to remain with the divine teacher. With their burdens, they return to their work. These workers can never attain the highest success until they learn the secret of strength. They must give themselves time to think, time to pray, time to wait upon God for a renewal of physical, mental, and spiritual power. They need the uplifting influence of God's Spirit. Receiving this, they will be quickened by fresh life. The wearied frame and tired brain will be refreshed. The burdened heart will be lightened. 
midday power surge. It goes on. Not a pause for a moment in God's presence, but personal contact with Christ to sit down in companionship with him. This is our need. Happy will it be for the children of our homes and the students of our schools when parents and teachers shall learn in their own lives the precious experience pictured in these words of Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 3, verse 4. I sat on his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Do you know what song just came to my mind? I come to the garden alone, while the dew is still on the roses, and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the sound of God discloses. He walks with me, he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there. As I tarry there, no, none other can ever know. That's it, my friends. We don't want a microwave experience, a microwave Christianity. So for those of you who are on the job, for this midday power search, that was your nugget. Five minutes, that was your nugget. Now for the rest of us. Friends, safe to serve and the rest of you. Let's come together and reason for a moment. As I go through this presentation, prayerfully consider the topics, the themes, the subjects, and on the God inspiration, respond. Respond, all right, respond. Quickly type in your responses at the appropriate times. Don't go overboard. Let's be temperate in all things. For one purpose for Midday Power Search is for it to be interactive. All right, my friends, with that in mind, Midday Power Search, microwave Christianity, lo and behold, I found this startling article which came out August 30th, 2019, from Shane Eidelman. This is from ChristianHeadlines.com. I'm going to post these statements below. Please, friends, go and read the statements, the scriptures, the comments. It's under, under the pinned comment, Prophesy Again TV. All right, it says, America's microwave Christianity, the heart of the present day church must change. Before I continue and read this article, remember friends, this is the condition of the churches. And before Christ comes, what must happen to Babylon? Type, talk to me friends. What must happen to Babylon based on the second angel's message of Revelation chapter 14, verse eight, Revelation chapter 18, the whole chapter, Okay, Calbert, Eugenie, Fabian, Laura, Babylon must fall. Has Babylon been falling since 1844? Yes, apostate Protestants, primarily, along with the papacy, popery, Roman Catholicism, and they are falling lower and lower. Now, friends, I'm going to post a statement, great controversy, Below this presentation, again, go below the pinned comment, Prophesy Again TV. Please, friends, read it. All right, friends, let's go on. It says, America's microwave Christianity, the heart of the present-day church must change. He says, as we all know, America is in a spiritual decline with no recovery in sight. Many churches have a form of microwave Christianity. Service times last just over an hour. Prayer is glanced over. And worship is designed to entertain the masses. Many pastors avoid offending their audience and seek to be motivational preachers speakers rather than convicting people of sin if we truly want to see revival the face 
of the present day church needs to change. Friends, what's your comment on that statement? Talk to me. What's your comment based on that statement? All right, friends. I'm going to read you a statement here from Great Controversy, page 386. Of course, he's right, Samara. He's right. And some of these people, God is going to call from Babylon when we give the everlasting gospel. Dolores, it's truth. All right. It says a profession, Great Controversy, 386. A profession of religion has become popular with the world. It goes on. The various religious bodies reinforced by the wealth and influence of these baptized worldlings make a still higher bid for popularity and patronage. Splendid churches embellished in the most extravagant manner are erected on popular avenues. The worshipers array themselves in costly and fashionable attire. A high salary is paid for a talented minister to entertain and attract the people. His sermons must not touch popular sins, but be made smooth and pleasing for fashionable heirs. Thus fashionable sinners are enrolled on the church records and fashionable sins are concealed under a pretense of godliness all right friends so what are your comments based on that statement from great controversy does this show that within even our churches within this denomination sda that many other churches and people are having a microwave christianity of course, Matthew, it's sad. Alma, it's truth. All right, friends, hear what this says. Let's go on with the same article. He says, granted, there are wonderful churches. But as a whole, we have drifted significantly off course. For example, do you ever wonder how a Christian, let alone a pastor, can embrace gay marriage? and encourage it so when a church pastor elders members are affirming supporting the lgb life lgbt lifestyle that's the microwave christianity he, he says people are bored they say so our services need to be more appealing the author says church is boring because the power of God has vanished from many congregations. There is a lack of desire in the pulpit as well as in the pew to pursue God. Pastors and Christian leaders, we must again see God as if our nation and the future of our children depend on it. Because it does. Then he says, where is the weeping? Where are the early morning prayer meetings? Where is the fasting? Remember when the church sought God in an upper room for days until fire fell? Remember when we were not in a hurry and extended worship services drove us to our knees remember when seeking god through prayer drove the church come on friends what are your comments here yes the standards are being lowered i agree <laughs> yes marie the blind is now leading the blind yes spiritualism is now being used to entertain the congregation. Yes, Kim Davis, Alicia, Javed, John Brown, creeping compromises. All right, friends, let's move on. This is the experience. I'm going to quote now from Great Controversy, page 403. I'll post this below as well. This was the experience. The Seventh 
Day Adventist pioneers had in the 1840s leading up to the opening of the investigative judgment. So what must be our experience today? If we are not having this experience, it means we're having a microwave Christianity. Just as the microwave destroys the food nutrients, we are dying spiritually, having a form of godliness, but no power from God. It says, carefully and solemnly, those who received the message came up to the time when they hoped to meet their Lord every morning, they felt it was their first duty to secure the evidence of their acceptance with God. Their hearts were closely united and they prayed much with and for one another. They often met together in secluded places to commune with God and the voice of intercession ascended to heaven from the fields and the groves. Friends, where are we right now? Where are we right now? In the fields? In the groves? All right, friends, come back here. It says, the assurance of the Savior's approval was more necessary to them than their daily food. That means you can even abstain from lunch to get midday power surge. What do you say, friends? If that's the case, say amen. Send in those amens. And if a cloud darkened their minds, they did not rest until it was swept away. As they felt the witness of pardoning grace, they longed to behold Jesus, whom their souls loved. And that's why midday power surge is also for seasons of prayer, friends. Prayer. It's time, my friends, to experience this beauty of Christ. All right, friends, this microwave Christianity is also found inside the feel-good churches. What did I say, my friends? The feel-good churches. All right, my friends, this is a second article, not the first. A second article is the same points. Listen what this says. This is Ravi Zacharias, August 29th, 2019. It says, many mainstream churches lost the real gospel. Focus now on feel-good moments. What are your comments on that, friends? All right, Heather, I agree with that comment. It says, many, some of the mainliners have lost numbers of church members and they should have lost numbers because they lost the message. He's saying the churches are losing members because they have lost the message. He says to Fox News, August 29, 2019, if you have lost the real gospel, people are going to say, why am I coming here to this church? It makes no sense. Then he says, is this an ethical society or a feel-good moment on Sunday morning? Zacharias' comments, come on the heels of a recent survey that found that the youngest generation in America, Generation Z, ranks spirituality as their lowest value. The survey explains that a trend that sets this digitally native congregation apart is the way they consume media. What are your thoughts, my friends? Come on, talk to me. What are your thoughts on this? And the sad reality is, many of our members have stopped attending local churches. Why? It's a form of godliness. A microwave Christianity. All right, mercy. Yes, people like pastors who give a lot of jokes in the pulpits. Humor, frivolity, frolic, having a fun time. 
on their way to hell. All right, my friends, let's close off now with the article we began with. August 30th, he says now, microwave Christianity. He says, methods, marketing programs, and surveys now lead the way. Remember when prayer and seeking God were assets, not liabilities to church growth? Remember when people were excited about seeking God rather than busy making excuses as to why they can't attend church and why they can't evangelize? Then he says, while five-minute devotions, what my friends? While five-minute devotions and prayers have their place, we will starve in these dire days. We need powerful times of prayer, powerful times of devotion, powerful times of worship. He says, without the heartbeat of prayer, the body of Christ will resemble a corpse. And how did Christ depict the Jewish church in Matthew 23? A corpse, dead men's bones. Then he says, the church is dying on her feet because she is not living on her knees. He says, prayerlessness. What, my friends? What's that word? He says, prayerlessness in the pulpit leads to apostasy and dead sermons. Mm. Prayerlessness in the pew leads to shattered lives and depression. He says in closing, Prayerlessness in men leads to the breakdown of the family. So what's the theme on the last point right here, my friends? What's the last theme right here, the last point? Prayerlessness. If someone were to ask you safe to serve right now, if you met someone on the job, at school, your neighbor, in the marketplace, and they asked you, what is prayer? How do I pray? What is communion? How would you respond? I'm waiting. Let me start you off. How would you respond? My friends, volume four, page 533 says, prayer is the opening up of the heart to God as to a friend. Talk to God as to a friend. What is prayer, friends? All right, transformation. Talk to Christ as a friend. How do you pray? How do you pray safe to serve and the rest of you? Give me some steps now. What are your process in prayer? How do you have devotion? How do you commune with God? Talk to me, friends. How? Remember, friends, we must spend the thoughtful hour each day. All right? Talking to God on your knees. All right? Opening up the scriptures. Elena, let me pause on, pause on your point. When you read that scripture, go to your concordance and find a word that encapsulates what you're going through. Search for that word in Psalm, Proverbs, Isaiah, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read those scriptures just above a whisper. If it's a prayer, make it your prayer. If it's a promise, Claim it. Believe it right now. If you find instructions in those scriptures, speak back to God, Lord. Help me to meet the conditions to fulfill this instruction. Examine yourself. If Christ is talking to David, he's talking to you. If Christ is talking to Peter, he's talking to you. If Christ is talking to Martha, what was Martha's problem? Busy here, busy there. If Christ is talking to Martha, he's talking to you. That's it, my friends. Volume 7, page 205. 
read the Bible. Read the what? Read the scriptures and regard it as the voice of God speaking to you directly. Prayer, communion is a two-way street. We talk to him. He must talk back to us. Okay, Elena, read the scriptures. Alma, Parks, yes, it's the voice of God. Pioneer, invite the holy presence of God through prayer. Conroy, listening to God. That's what we must do. That's it, my friends. That's how we commune. And don't leave God's presence until we feel how. When must we stop praying? When must we stop claiming those promises? When must we stop? When? After what point? Okay, Samara. Okay, Kim Davis. Until we feel strong in God. That is messages to young people. Page 131. Then we go about our daily duties. But keep those scriptures. Keep those songs in our hearts. That's it, my friends. That's how we get strength. What about singing? Should we sing? Sing the hymns. Yes, the scripture songs. That's it, my friends. Commit a text to memory daily. That is how we commune. Evening, morning, and at noon. Oh, my friends. And as we experience this, we won't have a microwave experience. Notice, friends, it can be one minute. It can be five minutes. It's the substance of it. Don't run in and run out of God's presence and you're still burdened down. That's a microwave experience. As a microwave destroys the nutrients, you're still burdened. It can be a minute, five minutes, one hour. It's the substance. All right, my friends, send in your prayer request. I'll give you, by God's grace, a part two on tomorrow's midday power surge. Send in those prayer requests as I play the song, I Come to the Garden Alone. Listen. I come to the Father in heaven, we are grateful for this midday power surge. Save us, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Maranatha.